Am I wearing a Canadian tuxedo? Sure am. But today's all about denim, so I'm right on trend. Welcome to my channel. Man, I'm so happy you're here today. This is an epic, jam-packed video. It's gonna be so good. If this is your first video, my name is Orly. This is the DIY designer. DIY fashion, styling hacks, outfit ideas. The lighting is changing. It's a cloudy day, so the light might change consistently. I'm gonna throw up a couple of photos of some of the inspirations that I had. These are all designer jeans, super expensive, super pricey, and there's no reason that we can't either shop our own closet or go to the thrift store, grab some denim, and elevate them ourselves. Totally custom to you, implementing the parts that you like, avoiding the parts that you don't. That is the benefit of DIY. Now, this video came together thanks to a very fabulous sponsor. Oh, so close. Ritual. This right here is my beauty pill. Now I'm excited to share what makes the highest Sarah supplement so awesome, but first off, I just want to share. This is the biggest sale I have ever seen Ritual do. It's 40% off right now. So if you've been wanting to get some new supplements, kickstart a new health journey for the new year, now is a really, really great time. And I'll tell you, the main reason that I love it so much is that it has this time release capsule so you don't get an upset stomach. I'm sure I'm not alone. I have bought vitamins over the years, convinced I will start taking them, but you always need it with food because it gives you a stomach ache and I don't feel like eating in the morning. I I just want my coffee. And so then what I do is I don't take them in the trash they eventually go, which is not the case with Ritual. Now, another thing that's amazing is their ingredients. So there's no artificial colorants. They're vegan, non-GMO, but they have something called traceable ingredients, which means you can literally look at every single ingredient and see where in the world they sourced it. Where is it actually coming from? Speaking of ingredients, let's talk about the Hyacera. This is such a cool one. This is what I call it my quote unquote beauty pill. And the reason is that there are two main ingredients that have the biggest effect. The first one is high beast. It's essentially a hyaluronic acid, which is found in our skin, but it's the stuff that filler is made of, which is why it really combats fine lines and wrinkles. And the other is Ceratique, which after their own independent clinical study proved to reduce wrinkles and fine lines after 90 days. So whether you're looking for a prenatal pill or a multivitamin or the beauty pill, honestly, Ritual is such a great place to get it. And right now at 40% off, I cannot recommend it enough. All right, guys, let's get into this DIY. Alrighty, we're gonna start off with this. It's the Cutout Rhinestone Hearts. This is by Alice and Olivia, but there's actually quite a few brands doing this. So I went downtown and I found a few really fun options. I'm gonna link below some that I found on Etsy, uh, which are exactly the same as what I found online. Now, the first thing you wanna do is create your design. Number one, I recommend not doing a tight pair of jeans if you are planning on cutting out the space inside of the heart, because no matter how thin you are, when you sit down, things will come out of that opening. So you wanna do it on the looser parts of your jeans or on a looser pair. Now I was trying to decide, did I want this kind of tuxedo stripe down the left-hand side and I would leave all of that open? Did I wanna do it all over? Did I wanna leave it exposed? Did I wanna leave it solid? I ended up putting up a poll on Instagram and the overwhelming answer was same as my gut, which was do the overall leg and don't cut out the hole, leave it solid. That's what I end up doing. Now, to start off, I'm gonna use Fabri-Tac to tack them down. This is not permanent. I mean, this glue is permanent, but I am not using this as the sole method. I'm actually gonna hand sew these down. But you can see, I'm doing just a very, very light amount of glue. What this is gonna do is keep everything exactly where I want it so that when I hand sew it, it's easy and things aren't moving around. If you decide that you wanna glue them and you don't wanna hand sew, you're gonna wanna do more glue than that. But I just felt like hand sewing it was gonna be the better move. Anytime you pick up your rhinestone, make sure that you put like a pin to mark exactly where you wanna put it back so that you're guaranteed to put everything back exactly where you originally designed it. Now I grabbed a needle and thread. You're gonna knot off one side and you're gonna start from the back, obviously hiding the knot on the inside of your jeans. Now the easiest way to do this is right now, I, I originally came up on the outside of the heart. So now I'm gonna go on the inside of the heart underneath and come back on the outside. And that's gonna create one looping stitch tacking down that particular area. When you're doing something like this, you wanna move slow as you pull so that number one, things don't, don't get tangled. But number two, that you can also kind of control where the threads go. I'm using my thumbs to make sure that the threads are going in between the rhinestones so that I don't end up with any visible threads on top of the rhinestones. So you're just gonna do these little looping stitches around and around. I would say maybe every half inch is plenty. You don't need a lot. You just wanna tack down all the major corners. Now, when you're done, you're gonna knot it off. The way to do that is to create a stitch and instead of pulling it all the way through, you're gonna put your needle through the hole. So you see how I'm going through the hole, pull it tight, You'll do that twice, that creates a knot, cut off your excess, re-knot it, and move on to the next. 
I did the entire thing while sitting and watching TV and it happened super fast. All right, next up, these big exaggerated cuffs. Now, the reason I thought this is cool is that it is an exaggerated cuff on a full length jean. So it's not a matter of taking long jeans and cuffing them, it's actually making them longer. So this was a pair that I had thrifted. I loved everything about them except for the length. They were always a little funky and I thought this would be really awesome. So what I did is I took my jeans and I went to the thrift store. I walked up and down the aisles looking for number one, a color match. And then I looked for a width match. So I found a pair of jeans that were not only a perfect color, but were the right width to basically add an entire extension onto the bottom of my jeans that I could then cuff. So not only is it making my jeans longer, but it's giving me that exaggerated cuff that I can now wear with heels or big chunky boots. This is basically what it's gonna look like. You're going to stitch it directly into the existing hem of your jeans. Then you can fold it up and it's gonna hide that hem on the inside so you're not gonna see it. I tried it on and it was obvious that I had made it too long. It was like collapsing on itself, basically losing all of that awesome width that I had created. So while it was on me, I kind of played with it. I folded it up, I tucked it down. I didn't do it pretty, but at least I got an idea of the right length. So I took it off and I cut off about five inches off of what I had originally created for my extension. Now, if you buy a pair of jeans, you can see this donor pair, the front panel is smaller, more narrow than the back panel. If your jeans are not like that and they don't line up evenly, you wanna make a decision of which seam is going to match perfectly. I decided to match my outermost seam perfectly because when I cuffed it, that was gonna be what was most visible. And I was okay with having the inseam be a little jagged because you weren't really gonna notice it. So you're gonna pin it in. I decided to also pin it in so that the seam of my original jeans was exposed. In case I wanted to wear it like this, I thought maybe there was an option of styling it like this. You're gonna do your first one. Once you do your first one, use that as a guide for your second one, constantly folding it and matching it and making sure that your right and your left are even. Then once you pin it, this is what you would do. You would just basically fold it up, make your cuff as long or as short as you want based off the jeans that you're doing and we'll sew that in a minute. Now I thought it would be fun to actually create like a matching jacket and I happen to have this jacket, which was sort of perfect because if I folded it up just under that top pocket, covered the bottom pocket perfectly. So it gave me this sort of exaggerated exposed cuff detail that I thought would work really well. Now, the only problem with this jacket is that it's more of a tailored jacket, meaning that the waist is pinched and the hip is a little wider. So you can see I'm sort of contending with a little bit of extra fabric in between each seam. So I'm gonna sew it and it's gonna work, but I will tell you that I wish I had tapered it a little bit because you'll see at the end, it almost flares out at the waist instead of coming in at the waist. Now, I am sewing my extension, my jean extension in. I'm using a matching orangey denim thread and I'm going right into the existing hem of my original pair of jeans. Sewing it all the way around in a circle, it's attached, you can't see the stitch. It's right in that existing stitch line and that's all that you need to do. It is super simple, really fast. Now for the jacket, I'm doing the same thing. You can see I'm pulling really hard to try to uh, evenly distribute that excess between each seam. Again, it works totally fine, but you'll see at the end, it's just like a little bit uh, wider at the waist than I would have wanted, but that's it. Then you're gonna press everything so that it all looks nice and legit. And we're moving on to this guy. I thought it'd be fun to create like a short sleeve jacket with all of these distressed edges. Now, at first my plan was just distressing the edges. So I took my scissor and I basically cut every edge I could find. I cut around the um, sleeve, I cut all along the bottom, I cut down the button placket, I went into the edges of all the exposed seams, into the front pockets, into the shoulders, into the collar, like literally my goal was cut, throw it in the wash, fray everything. And it was right around now that I'm like, no, I'm gonna make this a shirt. So I not only cropped it, but then I cut the sleeves off. All you're gonna do is throw it in the wash a couple of times. This bad boy will fray. You'll see it at the end. It's really cool and really fun. Now it's onto this. This was one that I was the most excited about. I love the fun color on the right there. I loved the black. My first thought was that I should water down the paint. I thought, okay, I don't want this to get too crunchy and too thick. So if I water it down, I can kind of like, I don't know, dye it almost with a thick black paint. I also thought maybe a dry brush was good. So number one, I tested dry brush and it was clear right away that was not gonna give me enough of an opaque color. So then I took my watered down paint. At first I thought I was golden. The problem though is that because it's wet, 
it makes it look more opaque than it is. When it dried, it didn't have the right effect. It almost faded into a charcoal looking color and it looked like it was dyed instead of painted. So I end up redoing it, but the overall painting technique is the same. Another mistake I made is I thought that the contrast between the light denim and the black was a little too harsh. So I started buffing and almost like dyeing the lighter part just slightly darker. And I didn't like that either. The contrast was lost and they just looked like black jeans was all when all was said and done. So I ended up throwing them in the wash. Like here you can see how saturated they look and it's great. I threw them in the wash like eight times to basically try to start over. And you can see a lot of the paint held, but it literally looked like it was dyed. So what I ended up doing that night, like in my bedroom, 10 o'clock at night, I just decided to try it on another pair of jeans with straight up thick paint. No water down, no dry brush, grab a bunch of paint, paint it aggressively, make each area really bold, really strong, and it was absolutely perfect. In the morning, I decided to do a second coat only on certain areas, specifically like the bottom to the knee and then a couple of strategic spots on the top, making sure that where I had sporadic paint was really intense and intentional. It looks amazing. I can't wait. It's not crunchy. I love them. A huge fan. You got to do it. A fun color like red. Oh, so fun. OK, let's move on to this studded pair. I bought these studs. I will link them down below. You can pop them in with your fingers. It's very, very easy. What I recommend doing at first is pop them in without bending the back so you can start to get an idea of your placement. Push them in and just sort of look at them. Be like, do I want to do the pocket? Do I want to do the waistband? Where do I want it? How many rows do I want? This is a good designing portion. Then when you're ready, you can actually start pushing them in. One thing to consider is if you have like a button or you have belt loops, you want to work within the space. You want to consider how much space you have so that everything can be even. When you push it through, you can see it's going to push four little spikes through. You need to fold them down in order to actually stud it. There's a few different ways of doing this. At first, I push them through and then I use like a plier. As we go, you'll see I get better and better and I come up with a really good way. Another thing, like I said, you have to contend with the elements you're dealing with. So when you've got two belt loops, you want to make sure to evenly distribute it. So don't just start on the right and work your way to the left. Do like two on the right, then two on the left, then come in. The next two, then the next two. This will guarantee that you end up even and you don't end up getting to the edge and like not having enough space. Now here, this is what I ended up realizing was the fast. I wrapped a bunch of tape around my finger because it started hurting after a while. I pushed them through. I lightly folded them just enough to hold them into place. Push, 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 push. Then I went in and I grabbed the back of a screwdriver and I really flattened them so that it was fully flat and in the fabric. Protecting your finger is really important. Smashing them in like this, it just moves way, way faster than the way I was doing it before. All right, you guys, that's it. I'm stoked on how they came out. They are so fun. They bring me so much joy. I hope you guys are going to give them a shot. Remember to give Ritual a shot as well. I've got the link down below, 40% off. So if you've been wanting to get kind of a little bit of a health journey kicked off for the new year, now's a great time because you can get it at such a major, major discount. Let's take a look at how these came out. I'm too excited.